Well, a top Ukrainian official is calling on big tech to step up in this fight against disinformation as we see this conflict between Russia and Ukraine play out. In a letter to Apple CEO Tim Cook, Ukraine's vice prime minister, calling on the tech giant to block the use of Apple products and services in Russia. Let's bring in Yahoo Finance's Dan Halley, who's following that story for us. And Dan, what's the response from Apple so far? So far, we haven't seen any real response yet, Akiko, but uh, the vice prime minister here uh, essentially said, uh, I appeal to you to stop supplying Apple services and products to the Russian Federation, including blocking access to the App Store. Now, that would be a big deal considering that, you know, obviously Apple operates within Russia as it does any other country, uh, offering things like the iPhone, like Macs, uh, the App Store. There are some regulations that Russia puts in place uh, to prevent Apple from offering the full suite of apps that are available in, say, the App Store here in the U.S., uh, but they do regularly comply with Russia when it comes to their laws, as they'll say they comply with all local laws. So it would be interesting to see Apple make a move like this. Uh, now, likely what you'll hear is uh, from them, and again, they haven't responded, but based on what other tech companies have said, that if they cut off some people or they decide to cut off all of Russia, then that would be impacting people who aren't a part of this, aren't a part of this invasion or want nothing to do with it or uh, stand against it. So uh, it really you know, would be uh, perhaps a, a dangerous move to do that. Uh, we've seen Facebook, uh, uh, Meta, fa Facebook's parent company, excuse me, Meta, uh, essentially say the same thing uh, when people were talking about cutting them off. And so on that front, Dan, I know you had a chance to speak with the head of security policy over at Meta. We saw the statement come out from the company about they are, in fact, cracking down, especially on disinformation coming out of Russia. What are the next moves they're looking at? Yeah, I, said, I got to sit down and speak with Nathaniel Gleischer. And basically what he said was the company uh, is seeing increased activity uh, from hackers trying to steal accounts and spread disinformation uh, and groups that are stepping up their efforts to spread disinformation. Here's what he had to say. We've identified and removed two separate campaigns. The first campaign is an influence operation, which was a group of individuals that were pretending to be legitimate journalists based in Kyiv, when in fact, that's not what they were at all. They were trying to spread false narratives about making claims that the Ukrainian government was failing or that things were going well for Russia and poorly for Ukraine within the conflict. The second operation is a hacking group known as Ghostwriter, which the security community has been tracking for some time. They were targeting and taking over or attempting to take over the accounts of prominent individuals in Ukraine. Think about uh, journalists, military personnel, and prominent figures like politicians. They would try to take over. First, they would compromise their devices and email and then use them to hack all of their social media accounts to try to spread false narratives and disinformation. The good news here is, Although we see these threat actors trying to hack into accounts, trying to spread disinformation, they're not having a lot of success. Our teams and other defender teams have been tracking these types of threats now for years, and these they aren't reaching very large audiences. So, for example, the influence operation had less than 5,000 followers on Facebook and Instagram. And although they were also on a number of other social media sites, YouTube, Twitter, OK, and VK, which are both Russian social media sites, their audiences were quite small there as well. So how are, are these uh, you know, groups spreading? How, how large are they? How widespread are they? And I guess what kind of information are they spreading beyond you know, just the immediate things of you know, uh, Russia is doing well and, and making advances, things like that? So we've been tracking and enforcing against threat actors like this for some time. One of the fundamental truths of security is that the bad guys keep trying and we know they'll keep trying. And the goal is to make them less and less effective. So as one example, the influence operation we announced yesterday is linked to an influence operation we took down about a year ago. A year ago, the operation that we removed had approximately 250,000 followers when we took them down, this operation had less than 5,000. That's a very good trend and, it's, and it, it reinforces the way that defenders across society are controlling these threat actors and making it harder for them to operate. In terms in general, of, sorry. No, no, I was gonna say in general, how, how much volume are you seeing out of, out of these kinds of things? How, how large are they? And are, are they only in Russia and Ukraine or are they operating in other spaces as well? 
we see influence operations around the world. In fact, every month we put out a public report where we detail the influence operations we've identified and taken down. Whenever we do that, we share information about how broad they are, how many followers they had, and the types of actions we've taken. We also share information with government and with our industry partners so that they can investigate and take action themselves as well. The truth is that over the past several years, we've built a team that is focused on tackling this threat and containing these threat actors. And we work with our partners across society to do that. I guess when you look at the, the kind of impact that these groups can have on meta users or, or users you know, who may not necessarily be on a meta, who may happen to see something or hear something from friends, what, what kind of impact can they have uh, for a situation like this, like an, an actual war? And you actually raise a very good point here because the influence operations that we see, they don't just tackle one social media platform. They are widespread across social media platforms and they often increasingly rely on websites that they will create to try to make themselves look more legitimate in particular because quite frankly, they're getting taken down so quickly off of the social media platforms that they're looking to find other places to hide. Now their goal here is to spread disinformation, to spread divisive narratives and undermine trust in public debate. As one example, the hacking group that I mentioned, one of the pieces of content they tried to share was a video that purported to show Ukrainian soldiers surrendering and waving a white flag at surrender. This is why it's so important to find and counter these operations early. One of the biggest differences between 2016, 2018 even, is that there are now determined defender teams around society working on these threats and sharing information so that we can all take action very quickly. Uh, you know, the the uh, Ukrainian soldiers purporting to be, you know, Ukrainian sh soldiers showing the white flag. You know, we've seen other instances where things have been shared on uh, the Russian side and the Ukrainian side uh, expected or pretending to be uh, actual images when, in fact, some of them are scenes from video games. I guess, how is, is Meta working to ensure that things that are posted, uh, you know, even if they aren't from uh, dis disinformation groups or from regular people, how is Meta working to ensure that they're actually real, uh, you know, when we see things like that? So we've stood up a special operations center that lets us bring together experts from across the company to move very quickly to counter these threats. Uh, but in addition, we work with third party fact checkers. These are people who are on the ground, who have expertise in the environment, in the invasion that's happening and in the sort of reality on the ground. They review posts, whether this is video or other pieces of content. And if, if they identify something as false or misleading, then we label it to make sure that people can see that clearly and we demote it. What that means is very few people will see the post in the first place, but if they hunt for it, whether they find that on our platforms or somewhere else, they will see a label on it that very clearly indicates that it's false. And I think it's really important that people can get this information, not just that the video disappears, but that when people see it, it's labeled as false. So that if they find it somewhere else, they can see that it's been debunked. Yeah, Kiko, he's really providing a, a lot of information there. And he also says that uh, there's some groups that are trying to hack into user accounts and basically that users in Ukraine specifically have to be on high alert that hackers don't get access to their accounts and then spread additional disinformation. So uh, a lot of information there, though, coming out of Meta this morning. Yeah, it's just a reminder of how layered some of these disinformation campaigns are, but fascinating to see how this is playing out. Uh, Dan, thanks so much for bringing us that interview.